In today's video, we're going to be learning how to make this particular satisfying Newton's cradle effect. We're going to learn the modeling and then we're going to focus a little bit on the animation and how you use the graph editor to create this particular motion. Later on, we're also going to learn how to use the workbench render engine to create this particular clay model rendering, which is really good for showing products and in situations like this. So without any further ado, let's start right off. We're going to go into our default scene. We're going to hit X to delete the default cube. Then we're going to hit A and we're going to add in a cylinder. We're going to scale the cylinder down to maybe 0.2 and then scale it up on the Z axis by 10. This is still a little too thick, so we're going to scale it again by 0.5, but we're going to say Shift Z so that it scales only on the X and Y axes. This still seems a little too thick, so we're going to say 0.25 instead. Once we have that, we're going to tab into edit mode, then just grab everything on the Z axis and just bring it up till the origin matches with the center. Tab out. Now when we rotate it, it'll rotate about that point. So now we can rotate it on the Y axis by maybe 15 degrees. Now we can just grab it on the X axis and then move it to the side. Now we can hit one and just take a look at it and that looks fine. Maybe grab it again on the X axis just a little bit further. Now we can duplicate it on the X axis, bring it out to right there, then rotate it on the Y axis by minus 30 degrees. Once we've rotated it by minus 30 degrees, we can add in the support structures to actually make this stand. So we can say Shift A, Mesh, and this is a lot about preference, whether how you'd like it. Since we used spheres in the previous one, we'll use cubes in this one. So take the cube, scale it down to maybe 0.1, and then just grab it on the x-axis, on the z-axis, move it up by one unit, grab it again on the x-axis, and then just bring it underneath that cube. Now you see this is intersecting a bit. We don't want that. So we're going to go back. We're going to select both of these and just grab it on the z-axis by one unit. For this particular object as well, there's something called linked duplicates, which is Alt D instead of Shift D. So we're going to delete this. We're going to use linked duplicates so that we don't have to copy the material every single time. So we're going to do Alt D X and then grab it, move it till here, rotate on the X axis by minus 30 degrees, Y axis, and there we go. Now, because this is a linked duplicate, if we change the color for this one, this one's going to change color accordingly. Now we can take this particular square, Alt D it, and then just grab it on the x-axis and move it right there. So now we have the stand and now we need something on top as well for the connection that we're going to have a sphere itself. So shift A, mesh, UV sphere, scale it down 0.2 maybe, 1, all right, G, Z, grab it up, move it till there, and there we go. Now if we look closely, it's still a little too small, so we'll just scale on all the axes by 2 and that should do. So now that we have that, we can just take all of these and parent them to each other. So that take this, control shift click that one, control P, set parent to object. Then take this, select this, shift P, send parent to object. So this is going to be our base. And if we just move this, everything else should move accordingly. Now we can select everything and then Alt D to get a linked copy, Y, and just move it by some amount. This looks fine. So now if I move this, everything should move as well. So now again, select everything and then hit Alt D X and just move it to right about there. We also require some material on top. We're going to take care of that. We're going to hit Shift A Mesh Cylinder RX 90 Scale 0.1 Scale Y. Just bring it up maybe 25 for now. Let's go to 3, GY, just bring it to the center, and then GZ. So now this is, again, a little too thick. So let's just scale it on everything but the Y axis. So Shift Y, and then say 0.5, and that should be the right thickness. Now we want this to be linked to the same material as this. So we're going to Shift click this, hit Control L, Link Materials. Now we can take this, again, parent this to its parent. So control P, set parent to object. Then take this, Alt D to duplicate it, shift it out here, Alt P to clear parent, and then take this, this, control P, set parent to object. 
So now that we have this entire thing set up, we can remove the relationship lines because we don't need them. And now we can just select everything, grab it on the x-axis and just move it so that it is centralized. So there we go. Now we have it perfectly centralized and we can add in our Newton's cradle. So we can just set up our camera before that, make sure that we have this in the vertical aspect ratio because this is going to be released as a reel. And then of course here, we're gonna go for 1920. Now take the camera, change its focal length, make it something like 18, then N, view, camera to view, N, then just zoom in, Alt G, Alt R for the camera, R, X, 90, G, Z, move it up, then G, Y, move it out. And then what we're going to do is we're just gonna G, Z it a bit so that it comes down. Let's go to the camera, viewport display, passport out, we're gonna change this up so that nothing else can be seen. Then we're gonna change this to rotation about the 3D cursor right here so that when we do any transform, it's gonna do it about the 3D cursor, which is at the origin. So let's take these two, GY, just so that it's centralized. Let's make sure that it's centralized. Now back to our camera view, take our camera, grab it back, and now rotate it about the Z axis and you see this is the motion that we will get. Everything perfectly fits within the camera's view. So this is how it's going to rotate when we actually create the animation. So let's take it to an arbitrary position like this. Shift A, add in a new empty plane axis, select the camera, then select the axis, hit Control P, set parent to object. So now when we rotate the empty, the camera rotates accordingly. And we can just keyframe the cam the empty to get all the motion of the camera. So now we have to actually create the pendulum balls. So what we're gonna do is shift A, mesh, UV sphere, control two, because we want these to be very smooth. Also object shade smooth. Now that we have our object shaded smooth, let's just deal with the size of it. So grab it on the Z axis, move it up, scale it down to maybe 0 0.5. And I think that looks large enough to be our balls. Now we had five balls in the previous one, but in this particular animation, I want to use only three. So shift D Y and just shift it by one, shift D Y, shift it by one. Again, don't do shift D, do Alt D. So Alt D Y one, take this Alt D Y one. So now we have our balls ready for the Newton's cradle. We can do shift A mesh, make a very thin line. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead with a cube this time, scale it down 0 0.0, maybe 0 0.5, scale it on the z-axis by 10, maybe 20, 30, we'll deal with that. Tab into edit mode, go to one, then do GZ control such that the base lands perfectly there. Now GZ till it comes to the center of the ball. First, you have to make sure that you change this to individual origins, then rotate it on the y-axis till it's pointed perfectly at this ball, then scale it on the z-axis, but we have to make sure that it's the local z-axis. So then scale z and then just scale it up till it matches, and then fine tune that turn. So just rotate it, y. Now it's clearly too fat, so again, scale, shift z, and just scale it down because till it becomes approximately the size of what a string would be. Now scale it down on the Z a little bit and that should do. So yeah, now it looks fine. Maybe scale it a little smaller because strings generally are very thin. So now that we have that, we can just do Alt D, R, Y, and till it matches up perfectly with that side. So we're gonna have to make sure that it matches up again. So now we have both of them matching. Now we can take both of these, Alt D, Y, shift it by one, Alt D, Y, shift it by two. And there we go. Now we can take this and this and then hit Control P, set parent to object. Take this, take this, Control P, set parent to object. Take this, shift select this, control P, set parent to object. Same thing, get all of the balls to get parented to that object. Control P, set parent to object. Control P, set parent to object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab, 
so that we go into edit mode, we're going to select the top face. So you can hit this to toggle X-ray vision. Go to face select, select just this face, shift S, cursor to select it, and then switch off X-ray vision. Shift A, add in, no, tab out of edit mode, shift A, add in an empty, plane axis. And now what we can do is we can take this control P to the empty. So now when we rotate the empty on the x-axis, we get the motion that we want. Now we can do the same thing. So just shift D Y once, shift D Y once, then take this, hit this control P, set parent to object, take this control P, set parent to object. So now we have this that can rotate on the x-axis and we have this that can rotate on the x-axis, which is exactly what we require. Now we have to actually create the animations. So we're gonna be animating keyframes for these three particular things. So let's go ahead and have the timeline out along with a graph editor. Switch this to the graph editor. So now let's go to the object properties panel right here. And now we're going to keyframe just the x-axis. So let's do that at zero, but we don't want this to actually be here at zero. At zero, we want this to be rotated by maybe 30 degrees. So let's say minus 30 and just add in that keyframe. Now, how long do you want this to take to go down? Let's make this length of the animation. The length of the animation will be 320. We can change that later on if required. Make sure that you have the frame rate set to 30 frames per second. Now let's go back here. Let's say it takes about 20 frames to come back down to its mean position. So that's zero, hit the keyframe. And let's just see how that looks. Okay, so right now the interpolation is at Bezier. We require it to be Bezier, but we don't want it to be like this. We need to change it. So let's first take this, let's just rotate this by 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees. And now let's see what the motion looks like. That's good. It's much better. You see how it's starting off slow, but it's going and hitting fast. If it hits at this exact position, this one is going to have a keyframe right here and 20 frames down the line, it's going to go RX 30, then keyframe. And then again, after 20, it's going to come back down. So RX minus 30 and then keyframe. So now we have the three keyframes. Let's deal with the motion in this particular situation, and then we can actually see it. So rotate X 90, minus 90, rotate X minus 90. And now let's just take a look at the animation. It comes down here a little too much, so we don't want it to be this tilted. And this also, it's slowing down a bit too much. So we want to reduce the amount it slows down. So we can say scale 0 0.5. And then here, we can just rotate it by maybe 20 degrees. So take this and rotate it by minus 20 degrees. Rotate minus 20 degrees. So now that we have that, let's take a look at it. That looks fine. Still a little bit too much, so we're gonna go rotate minus five again here as well rotate five so now that that happens these corners right now might come to an end because there's no more motion after it but if we were to add another keyframe which you can see right now if we were just to add a keyframe the chase the shape of the bezier curve changes so we don't want that we want these ends to be free so what we do is we hit n to get this particular panel and over here we change the handle type, the right handle. You see, this, this keyframe has two handles, the left keyframe and the right keyframe. Now the right keyframe, we don't want it to be present. So what we do is we change the right handle under F curve, we change the right handle from align to free. Then we take it and we scale it down to zero. So this, we're gonna do the same thing with this. Take this left, now this is the left handle for this. So take it, free, scale, zero. So now let's just take a look. So now this particular animation is what we want repeated. So we're just gonna hit Control C and now we can paste it every 40 frames. So let's go to like 
frame number 100, which is 40 frames after that, control V. Then this is currently at 140, so let's go to 180, control V. And then since this is now at 220, we can go to 260 and hit control V. And it's really that simple. But we also require the same thing to happen to the other curve. And we don't want to spend all our time redoing all of the calculations that we did. So at 60, this is supposed to happen. So we hit control V, but we don't want it to be facing on top. We need it to be at the bottom. So we're gonna do it scale Y minus one, and then grab it on the Y axis and just bring it down to zero. And now again, we don't require these two keyframes anymore. So we can X delete keyframes. And this itself, now we just have to copy every 40 frames. Let's copy these so that we don't have to scale it every single time. And then to control V. What we can do is we can just hit control V and then G X minus 20. So there we go. And now we get the entire animation fairly easily. Now that we have the animation set up, we can go ahead and remove this because we do not require it. So we can take this, join areas, and just move it up and grab this, move it down. In fact, we don't necessarily require the timeline for the most of it anymore. So we can make this very, very small. We can remove the summary. And now we can go in and we can actually get the animation of the camera. So take this, empty, hit I on the Z axis rotation. Then at the last frame, 320, it's going to start at frame 1. Okay, so at 320, just go RZ 360, hit I, or just keyframe the Z location again. So now when we play it, it's going to start off slow and then speed up in the middle. We don't want that, so we hit T, linear, and it's going to work perfectly now. So now some of you don't like the fact that the camera is actually moving and some of you want a static situation. In that particular case, you can create a situation where the camera is facing the region exactly how you want it to be, like a straight on view like this. And in case you want to render both of them, you can just take the camera and you can hit Shift D to duplicate the camera and enter so that it remains in that particular position. Now selecting the camera, you can hit Alt P to clear parent. And when you're doing that, make sure that you choose the option that says keep transform so that it stays in the same position. After that, you can go ahead, select that camera, and then go to view, cameras, set active object as camera. So now when you play it, the entire animation is gonna happen from that static view. And the other camera, of course, is going to rotate around it. So with that, you can actually render this out separately as well and you can render out one with the camera moving based on what you prefer. So you can go ahead and select the other camera, which is the child of the FD, and then set that as the active camera to view. And you can now have the rotating animation as well. Now what we're going to do is the clay model rendering, because that requires the least setup for materials, and it's the fastest rendering that's available. So for that, we have to go into our render properties and change our render engine from EV to Workbench. Now in Workbench, of course, our renders, we can increase that up to maybe 32 samples. We can change our lighting from Studio to Flat. Let's change to the rendered view as well so that we can see what's happening. So normally we're on Studio, but we should change it to Flat to get, our, to get the effect that we want. Now we can switch off overlays. Also, let's just add in a plane for now which is going to act as the floor. So plane, Alt G to clear its location, and then just scale it by 1000 units. And also, because we've scaled it by 1000 units, take our camera, go to the clip end, and instead of 100, just make this something really large, like 10,000. So now switch this back off so that we don't see the overlays. Go back to our render properties, and let's change the color from material to single, now we can change this color to whatever we want. We'll keep it at white for now. In fact, complete bright white. And everything's gonna change when we switch on cavity, increase the ridge, 
and increase the value. Of course, add in an outline for everything and change from world to both, ridge and valley. So with that, we have this particular animation. Let's change the world color all the way to white. So there you go. So now you see, you get all of these different things. Now, these four things also, we should have it as shade smooth. So let's just go here, shade smooth, take this object, shade smooth, shade smooth. So now you can see that they're actually shaded smooth. Once that is sorted, we can actually go ahead and render this out. Maybe we can change the color to a little bit of an orangish color or anything. Everything's actually gonna look pretty good because you get all of the shadows. Let's switch on shadows as well. So you can just switch on shadow from here and then you can reduce the amount or you can increase it depending on what you prefer. So you can actually make it really intense. And in, that, in this case, you can change the angle of the shadow. So it's all up to your personal preference. So this actually determines how sharp the shadows are. So you see this gives like a very sharp shadow and if you reduce it, it's gonna give, an, no, not shadow. Wait, let's keep shadow at what, 0.9. And over here, if you change the FOC of the shadow, it's a nice gradient soft shadow that we have. I personally think that this looks the best because the harsh shadows of these sides don't interfere onto the ball. And yeah, this is what we're going to go with, I guess, for now. We could just have different colored re uh, clay renders and just render it out. And I'm just gonna have different clay colors as the final renders. Every time it hits, it's just gonna change colors. I think that's also going to look pretty good. So let's go ahead with that. Let's see. And we're just going to make sure that it's always muted colors every time. Nothing too harsh. Nothing like, yeah, blood red. No, that's muted red. That's awesome. Is go from one to frame number 20. We're going to keep that at the absolute white color. And make sure that you change the properties as well. So output. We're going to change it to our correct folder, accept, and change the file format to FFmpeg video encoding, change it to container to MPEG4, and encoding quality to perceptually lossless. Once you have this, you can just change it from 0 to 20. We want to render it like this. So make the end value 20 and hit render, render animation. And this particular thing renders pretty fast. Now we're gonna start from frame number 21 and we're gonna end it at frame number 60 because that's when this ball hits. So let's go to frame 60, end it at 60 and change the color to something else. So let's see. In your render properties, the single color, let's go from initially maybe a very dark color first. So it goes directly from white to black. Let's go with as dark as possible such that every detail is still seen. So I think this is a really decent dark color. So render animation. Now, as soon as it finishes rendering that out, the next one's going to be again from 60 to 100. So it's gonna go from 61 to 100. And we're gonna to have to change the color Maybe this time we'll go with some type of a bright green, or maybe we'll start off with our the ion colors. All right. So hit render animation. Now we can go ahead and do this for every single one of the different versions that we go through. Thank you all for watching. I really hope you learned something and 
stay tuned for the next one till then stay creative